My name is Kai Landau. I'm the Vice Consul for the Hawaiian Embassy, the Hawaiian Kingdom. I come from Hawaii. And uh, the things that we're working on now are joining together indigenous people in the world to address the effects of tourism and by taking control of it and by working together and designing our own systems and controlling our own process. Um, we would bring people in to a good experience where they leave uh, understanding our sustainable systems that we've created and that they can bring them back to their own homes and then they can support ours because the supporting of our system, the tradition like we have in Hawaii of Mapuatu Makai from the mountain to the sea, which is a process of, of having different permacultures that sustain us, can be things that they can adopt and then they can support us when we are, by supporting us, we're protecting their interests in our lands. So when they come to visit us, it's a clean, healthy, pristine world that we've been the stewards of in the beginning of time. So this is an idea that understanding if you know who to invest in in the world, where should you invest your energy, what is your interest, are the corporations in there for your interest? They are not the stewards of the land, they have not been good stewards of the land in the whole. We are the traditional stewards, the Hawaiians are the traditional stewards, and that is a very good place to, to invest with us, and share with us, and share ideas, and in, introduce new technologies we are not living in the past. Wonderful. And you feel like you're uh, uh, an occupied land, actually. You have your own culture and identity, and Hawaii is an authentic, original land that somehow the United States of America has claimed as its own. So you see them as foreigners? Well, that's a kind of a complicated question in terms of foreigners, but the American government has lost its way and entered our lands in 1893 and got confused that they thought it could be theirs. And there's nothing in the law or their laws or our laws that allow such a thing. And we need to help them understand what, what's fair in the world, what's legal in the world, what treaties are in the world. And as for the people that they are, the people in our communities are our communities, whether they're Americans or not. And they belong there with us. But who decides? Who's the deciders of the, how the land is addressed and the sea and the air is taken care of? It's not up to America. Right. It's an international consensus of the indigenous people to have eco-friendly energy that's perpetual and free and friendly with geothermal, hydro, solar, wind versus these fossil fuel contaminants of gas, oil, nuclear, all that stuff is over, right? Well, we're certainly going to work towards making an end to a negative impact in the environment. And we've always had the positive impact, you know. And we're storing our fish ponds, we're storing our agriculture, building planting food instead of planting houses. Houses do not bear fruit, they only bear crap. <laughs> right. So we, we need to change that view. We need to understand how to live because if we are not the future, if the Hawaiians are not going to survive, nobody is. Oh, wow. Well, and thank you very much. What's your name again? Kai Landau. Hi, oh, Kai. Thank you. Hello. I'm Frank Craven. You're watching What's Ailing Heal in America. against indigenous people in non-self-governing territories. This resolution was never At the 2008 session of the, of the Permanent Forum, the Hawaii delegation and the Pacific Caucus initiated an intervention called on the United Nations to complete the task of de decolonization. The Permanent Forum adopted the recommendation to convene a seminar on decolonization in 2009. This seminar not yet materialized. The Kiwani Foundation, the Indigenous and, and Nations Coalition, and Aupuni Hawaii called a permanent forum on indigenous issues to urge the UN to in rectifying the damage caused by modern colonial by taking the following actions. One, convene the seminar on decolonization approved in 2008. So, Calvin, why are you here at the UN? 
Well, Frank, I'm here because, because uh, uh, we, we don't believe in this doctrine of discovery. In other words, the doctrine of discovery doesn't really apply to any indigenous nation because we got our teachings from the Creator. And also, too, we're, we're here because of land issues, and we're here of, for natural resource issues. These things we need to be in some degree of control over so that our young people today and, and for the next seven generations will have something that they, they can rely on to sustain life long after us elders are gone. That's why I'm here. Oh, so you're looking to bring eco-friendly energy versus fossil fuel industry for solutions versus pollutions for your future generations. For Mother Earth, you come here on behalf of future generations, yeah? For sure. That's what it's all about today. The self-determination and, 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 and the, the, the importance of being control of, and of who you are, this inter, in, internal strength that we have that has a close relationship with Mother Earth is what we're talking about. And Mother Earth needs help from our people of the four colors, of the black, red, yellow, and white, and the many of us that are in between those sacred colors. That's why, that's why we, we, we attend these gatherings. This is an ongoing problem, authority versus majority throughout history. The king has sent the peon off to war, and white man has d decimated native people all over the world in an effort to control. And how do we, as a people, under God, under Creator that knows that we are all longing to serve Mother Earth and Creator spiritually and humbly, but get along? There's these control issues that authority versus majority is the ongoing game. How do we override that? Big ego. Well, you know, the thing, one of the things that we have to do, we have to get that self-determination that our, that our people have. Self-determination, self-sufficiency. That was our major issue long before uh, somebody got lost and supposedly discovered it. We had a close relationship with Mother Earth we nurtured Mother Earth. We co-managed uh, Mother Nature. We've been out of business long enough. We have to get back into business. Let us decide on what's good for our community, not somebody far away in some glass tower. Right. Decision and another that. thing, in 1906, the laws against drugs sort of became enacted. Before that, opium, codeine, marijuana, whatever, were known as medicines or drugs that altered the mind and alcohol, whiskey, which was, uh, you knew not to show up drunk, you know, you knew not to get high, but you had a responsibility. It was up to every individual to understand where their limits were, and that's what we have to get to, a sense of our own personal dignity and where we say, no, this is not good for me, versus some impending authority, and then the for forbidden fruit creates more interest and appetite for that what they say we can't do. In our spirit, we know what's best for us and we have to find that balancing act with inside of us. Right, Chief? That's exactly true the way it is. Like, I firmly believe today, in 2012, that we as indigenous peoples, there's no, there's no, there's no place in, in, in our culture today for mind-altering drugs. No, Nor alcohol or demon rum whiskey. Yeah, right. Alcohol, drugs of any sort, that's what these, uh, these uh, prescriptive drugs are doing. They're taking away the, the independence of our people and be, making addictive to prescriptive drugs. Right. Well, it's a business. Pharmaceuticals, you know, it's a multi-billion dollar business. That's how Obama got elected. And that's how they perpetrate this pseudo-medicine. But the best medicine is being sober being clean, drinking fresh water, fresh food, real food, not GMOs, and, uh, and prayer, deep, sincere prayer. And the Creator hears, sees the color of our heart. It doesn't matter how you pray, it matters whether you're sincere in your prayer, uh, right? Exactly. And anyway, so that, you know, this conference I'm hoping is going to address some of these things. Um, we originally went to Geneva in 1987 lodged our, our, our complaint you know, in, the United, in the international law in uh, Geneva. So today, we're, we're, still, we're still at this thing, and 
but things are start, starting to get resolved. Wow. You know what? It's, it's funny because on August 17th, 1987, there was a harmonic convergence of five planets lining up and fire arrows of enlightenment came to the earth and everyone had turned a corner spiritually. So the indigenous nations went to Geneva proclaiming, you know, the treaties were broken and our people must respect it. Now we send, uh, you know, 30 years later, and as they say, the bubble of 2012, the Mayan calendar, and as again, there's going to be a harmonic convergence of planet and a galactic alignment of the whole stellar system and we're coming to closure, and there's a sense of coming to terms with this in a very respectful way, right? You feel that after a 30-year struggle, your, 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 your initial journey to Geneva has now, you, you're coming from northern Canada to uh, New York, you're finally coming to closure on this whole issue, and you've seen resolution to it, right? Exactly. Like, you know, we, when we went there in uh, 1987, the, the things we lodged in the international court are now coming to fruition. Today, we're here that we disagree with the, with the doctrine of discovery. It's a land issue, and it's a natural resources issue, and give us a chance to participate in decision-making process, especially at our own community level. We know what's better for our community than people in glass towers and far away from our Indian reserve reservations. Right. We can make decisions in our own community that, 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 that is going to help our young people to become contributors to this industrial society we have today. The economy, we got to get our young people in there. That's what our goal is. Oh, oh, oh. What's the island here in America?
The presenters, young and old, never doubted for a minute that the rapporteur was not only documenting the facts and cases they were presenting, but was hearing with his own heart the pain, commitment, and hope they were expressing to him from their own hearts. I thank you again, Jim, on my own and on their behalf. <laughs> Special Rapporteur and I am the next steps and the full report of this country visit are in your hands. We once again express our full faith and confidence in you in this regard. Chair Fultesia, thank you very much. This is manifested in the disposition and alienation of traditional lands and resources, the imposition of non-Indigenous judicial systems, the entrenched poverty, inadequate health care, and the dis disproportionate and unacceptable social statistics. In light of this, Madam Chair, I would encourage the Pacific States to look towards the basic, fundamental human rights contained in the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and restore to the Pacific Peoples, one, the right to self-determination articulated in Article 3 for all Pacific Island nations, maintaining the facility for bilateral dialogue, and two, the right to maintain Indigenous decision-making institutions articulated in Article 18 of the Declaration. Strongly encourages the State Party to urgently implement transformation of New Zealand's constitutional arrangements, ensuring to obtain the free, prior and informed consent of Māori regarding any issues Three sorts of action can address the outline problem. First, the Inuit and the Sami and the respective state need to agree on revisions of laws regulating industrial activities such as a long-term strategy for resource extraction to halt the race to the Arctic. As a principal political body for Arctic affairs, it is natural that the Arctic Council takes the lead in developing such a strategy. Moreover, private entities too should be obliged to behave in a manner responsible towards the environment and the indigenous cultures in, this, in the Arctic when operating there through accepting to com comply with an ethical code of conduct. If the Arctic Council adopts uh, Hi, what's your name? My name is Niko Valkeapa and I belong to the Sami people and I'm representing the Sami Council. So, you represent your people that don't recognize the, the political divisions of the different countries, right? Uh, we are um, people who are living in four different countries and uh, well, one of the, our basic ideas have been that, and that stands also our declaration that we are divided by four to live in four countries. What are the four countries? Sweden, Norway, Finland and Russia. Oh, okay. And those countries can't divide us. What is your name? I mean, what is the name of your tribe, or your people? It is Sami people. Yeah, wonderful. And could you give us some uh, salutation in your language? Muna male niko mikal valki ja pää Sami nammale kova niko ja mulle teki postaan outsti Sami ra. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm in the honor and the presence of a chief pipe carrier, which in the native tradition is fantastic and very special. Why is that? What do, what do you have in your hand there? Well, I have a, I have a repl replica of the, of the peace pipe that was given to uh, the Tatanka Oyate, which is made up of uh, the Lakotas, the Nakotas, and the Dakotas who occupied a lot of territory in what is now the central part of what is now the United States and Canada. They were known as the Great Central Plains of Canada. And that's where uh, our people were given their sacred teachings. 
the seven sacred rites and the peace pipe that were that was sent down by a spirit woman, Deska Wea. Wakanta could send down this spirit woman and gave the pipe and seven sacred teachings to our people. So today I, I, I'm, I'm in the United Nations and hope to be speaking this afternoon sometimes about you know the, the importance the importance of land and natural resources for our people, our First Nations of what is now North America, Canada, and the United States, so that we can provide some kind of a stability and balance for our young people, our, our children's children going from down for the next seven generations. That is the issue that's been here, and of course we don't believe in the doctrine of discovery because it's not, it's, it, our, our teachings were given to us by the Creator, not by any man-made human laws or human teachings they were brought to us by this place called Wien. That's what I'm going to be saying this afternoon here, here at the United Nations in New York. And I'd like to thank Frank and Michelle for putting up with us for the last couple of days and Oh, it's our pleasure. Now, getting back to the pipe, let's take a closer look at it. What is it that you have inside, and what do you smoke it? Well, I, I got traditional tobacco in there. Traditional tobacco, and I got some sage on top. Red willow, which is cha sha sha. We also use, you know, choke cherry, uh, uh, the, the skin of the choke cherries, and Saskatoons, and other nice smelling berries that we can, that's what you call traditional tobacco. There's no chemicals in, in, in the tobacco that I use in this pipe. But what does it mean to be a pipe bearer? Well, like, like I'm a pipe carrier. I've been a pipe carrier for the last uh, 37 years since I decided to, to set aside alcohol and drugs. So I use this pipe as much as I can. Many times when I go to uh, strange places, uh, you know, I, I, I sleep with this pipe. And, you know, and I, and I, and I use this pipe as much as I can to, to help me to, to deal with the issues and problems that I, that I encounter every day because of our, our societies are so, uh, are so complex and so mixed up in many ways that you know uh, I need, I don't need to get caught up in that. I believe in the teaching of the pipe, which is to promote peace, love, understanding, respect, honor, courage, health. I I, I believe in those things, and I also believe in, in the seven sacred teachings. I've been to many many sun dances. I've been to many many. Vision Quest in Bear Butte and other places in North America. I also believe, of course, in the Sweat Lodge. In the Vision Quest. And what you're doing is you've established a sacred area known as a, known as a, as a, as an altar where you are. This is where you're going to stay for four days and four nights. So you and how can you survive without water or food? Well, you know, like, again, if you're very fortunate, sometimes it rains. Sometimes it even hails. And, you know, when it, like, you know, my name is Thunder Boy. And most of the time when I'm up there having a hard time, on a, say, a, say a Sunday afternoon, then next morning I'm going to come down. That Sunday afternoon is my toughest time. And I pray to the Thunder Spirits to help me. And if it rains, <laughs> it's a gift. You got the water. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, you know, and, and that doesn't always happen. Special thanks goes out to Oren Lyons, uh, Wilton Little Child, and Ken Deer, and the indigenous world, uh, the Tatankoya, the people, call upon the Human Rights Council and the Economic and Social Council of this permanent forum of 1812 to reappeal the reappeal the laws, policies, and processes that have been infringed upon our people by the doctrine of discovery initiated in 1504. 
stressing the importance of promotion and pursuance of the objective of the Declaration of Human Rights in relation to our peoples, we, we respectfully ask to be included, to include the rights to our lands, resources, and the right to participate in the fully political, economic, and social, cultural in the province of Manitoba. This implementation of the Declaration of Human Rights on behalf of the Dakota Ayate Indigenous Peoples is a key instrument for the future protection, respect, fulfillment of our rights to initiate to the initial initial sovereignty as declared to us by the sacred covenant known, known as the Enskawiya. I'd like to sing a song that honors all that was happening here at the UN. Ate, ate, wa -u ate, ate, wa -di Chanu pa kinde yu ha wahdi edo. I'd like to sing an honor and honor of all the women who carry this pipe. It's called the Pteska Wia. Chanu pa wia. Zani ya omani pi hedo heyo hey 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 Pteska wia oni chia pi hedo hey 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 yo Om Takwas Thank you. And by working together. And